the respiratory system in human it start with nostril so what is the nostril the term nostril means the external opening that is present in the nose the external opening that is present in the nose we call it as nostril so there will be two nostrils it will be there and within the nostril there will be tiny hair like structures it will be there there will be tiny hair like structures it will be there and then a mucus layer it will be there inside the tiny hair like structure we call it as cilia it is there and then the mucus layer it will be there the mucus layer it will be there so what is the function of these two things these two things it trap it trap dust particles and pathogens it traps dust particles and pathogens so that is the function of the cilia and the mucus that is the function of cilia and the mucus now the oxygen it enters through the nostril and similarly the carbon dioxide it moves out through the nostril when the oxygen enters through the nostril from the nostril it moves to pharynx and larynx that is a passage and then it reaches the upper respiratory tract here this tract this is called as the trachea trachea or windpipe trachea or windpipe this is the center one and this trachea it is a windpipe which connected to the lungs you can see that lungs and inside the trachea it is lined with a specialized cell called ciliated epithelial cells ciliated epithelial cells it is ciliated epithelial cells the trachea inside it contains ciliated epithelial cells for example if you can touch it here this part it is called as the trachea if you touch here you can feel that that part is hard why it is hard because the whole trachea it is made up of c shaped cartilage c shaped cartilage what is cartilage the soft bone they are made up of soft bone it is c shaped cartilaginous bones the trachea completely the whole trachea it is made up of a c shaped cartilaginous rings and they are surrounded by the muscles so this region completely and the trachea you can see it here the trachea divides into two here you can see this part the trachea divides into two that two are called as bronchi the trachea it will be there like this the trachea it divides into two like this and the trachea divides into bronchi trachea divides into bronchi so this is trachea the c shaped cartilaginous rings the trachea divides into bronchi so we call that as right bronchi and then this one is left bronchi right bronchi and left bronchi so each bronchi each bronchi it will enter into lungs each bronchi it will enter into lungs so each bronchi it will enter into the lungs so within the lungs you can see that the bronchi divides like this you can see that the branch like structures here the bronchi further divides inside inside 
it completely divides that division we call them as bronchioles we call them as bronchioles so trachea divides into many branches the branches are called as bronchioles and each bronchiole it will end up in a structure called alveoli end up in a structure called alveoli so how it exactly looks suppose this is trachea the trachea divides like this the trachea divides like this so the trachea further it divides internally it will further divides like this so now we know that this is trachea the trachea divides into bronchus the bronchus further divides into bronchioles further divides into bronchioles and each bronchiole each bronchiole each bronchiole at the end at the end of the bronchiole each bronchiole it will have a grape like structure a cluster of grape like structure it will be there we call this as alveoli alveoli so trachea divides into bronchi and the bronchi divides into further divides into bronchioles and every end of the bronchiole it has alveoli it has the alveoli so this is the alveoli and this alveoli it is surrounded by surrounded by blood vessels it is surrounded by blood vessels so trachea divides into bronchi bronchi divides into bronchioles bronchioles divides into bronchioles at the end of the bronchioles alveoli is there alveoli it is richly supplied with blood vessels so that's why the alveoli it is a sac like structure a sac it is involved in gaseous exchange it is involved in gaseous exchange the alveoli it involves in gaseous exchange so you can see it here this is a this how the alveoli internally it looks like and it is connected to the blood vessels so directly the oxygen from the alveoli enters into the blood vessels from the blood vessels the carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide enters into the alveoli so the exchange of gases occurs between the alveoli and the blood vessels the alveoli and the blood vessels so this is a typical structure of our lungs typical structure of our lungs so internally if you observe our lungs a pair of lungs is there the lungs is covered by a membrane that membrane we call it as pleural membrane the lungs is covered by a membrane that membrane we call it as pleural membranes pleural membrane it's a double wall membrane a double wall membrane the pleural membrane that pleural membrane in between that double wall membrane there is a fluid if suppose this is a double wall membrane this double wall membrane we call it as pleura pleura so in between the pleura there will be a fluid is there in between the two membrane there will be a fluid that fluid we call it as pleural fluid pleural fluid so pleura is the membrane 
in between the pleura membrane pleural fluid is there pleural fluid is there that fluid it protects the lungs from shock and other injuries and also it reduces the friction in the lungs you can see that lungs our lungs the right side lung it has totally three lobes are there the upper lobe the middle lobe and the lower lobe three lobes are there upper lobe middle lobe and lower lobe whereas the left side lung it has upper lobe and lower lobe two lobes are there so totally the right lung it has three lobes the left lung it has two lobes are there this is how internally the lobes are there in the lungs apart from that at the base of the lung you can see that there is a flap here muscle which is called as diaphragm this flap we call it as diaphragm so what is the speciality about the diaphragm diaphragm is the one that separate the chest cavity the chest cavity and the abdominal cavity so the chest cavity and the abdominal cavity they are separated by a flap here a muscle that muscle is called as diaphragm the diaphragm is very important for breathing very important for breathing for the expansion of the lungs and the contraction and relaxation of the lungs the expansion of the lungs for that the diaphragm this diaphragm which is below the lungs it plays an important role in that this is about the typical structure of human respiratory system